Let us now discuss some of the features of Dryopithecus. Dryopithecus was about 4 feet long. So as you can see in the image, it more closely resembles a monkey than a modern ape. Right? So you can see the image that it closely resembles a monkey than a modern ape. And the structure of its limbs and wrists, as you can see, it shows that it walked away similar to modern chimpanzees, but that it used the flat of its hands like a monkey. So rather than knuckle walking like modern apes. So this is how you can see that Dryopithecus closely resembles a monkey than a modern ape. The face is, which is exhibited over here, it was tilted downward in profile. And the molars had relatively little enamel suggesting that it ate soft leaves and fruit, an ideal diet for a tree dwelling animal. So these are a few features of Dryopithecus. The next we have Australopithecus. Now Australopithecus literally means southern ape, right? And it is an extinct genus of members of the human family tree. Scientists generally accept five species of Australopithecus, that is Australopithecus afarensis, Australopithecus africanus, Australopithecus anamensis, Australopithecus garhi and Australopithecus sediba. So as belonging to this genus. And Australopithecus species referred to as Australopithecines had features that were both human-like and ape-like. So they had both the features, human-like features also and ape-like features also. Their brains were smaller and more in the range of the brain of modern apes. They tended to have longer arms that seemed well suited to climbing. So in general, their facial features, they looked more ape-like than human with sloping faces as you can see and jutting jaws. So this is how Australopithecus was there. So these are the features of Australopithecus. Now moving on to next we have Homo erectus. Now let's see what are the features of Homo erectus. Homo erectus had a brain size approaching that of modern humans. So they were close to humans. Averaging just under 1000 cubic centimeters, this brain actually reached the lower limit of modern human brain size. And erectus was also the first human species to have a wide fleshy nose, a wide fleshy nose and the face was flat and the skull had prominent ridges over the brow. So just remember that these are the features of Homo erectus. Then we have Homo neanderthalensis. Homo neanderthalensis is now an extinct species within the genus Homo and closely related to modern humans. So this Homo neanderthalensis is closely related to human beings. They are known from fossil specimens dating to the Pleistocene period and found in Europe and parts of Western and Central Asia. And the term Neanderthal, it comes from the modern spelling of the Neander Valley, which is in Germany, where the species was first discovered, right? And Neanderthal cranial capacity is thought to have been as large as that of modern humans. So they were much stronger than modern humans with an average male height of 5.5 feet. So this is, these are the features of Homo Neanderthalensis. Then next we have the Cro-Magnon man. Now, Cro-Magnon man has been used to describe the first early modern humans, the early Homo sapiens sapiens that lived in the European Upper Paleolithic. Cro-Magnons were robustly built and powerful. As you can see the image, the body was generally heavy and strong uh, with, you can say, strong musculature. The forehead was fairly straight rather than sloping like in Neanderthals and with only slight brow ridges, the face was short and white. The chin was prominent. The brain capacity was about 1600 cc, larger than the average for modern humans. Right. Next we have the Homo sapiens. Let's read this. Homo sapiens are primates of the family Hominidae and are the only living species of their genus. So this lineage originated 200,000 years ago in Eastern Africa and have since spread to all corners of the world. The average cranial capacity of Homo sapiens is roughly 1300 cubic centimeters, making the brains of the species absolutely smaller than those of Homo neanderthalensis. However, due to this gray size, small and lightly built postcranial skeleton, so the brain of Homo sapiens was larger relative to body size than that of Homo neanderthalensis. So the face of Homo sapiens is much smaller than those of earlier hominian species. So these are the features of Homo sapiens. I hope that now you can recall and list the features of the ones we have discussed 
right? So just remember Dryopithecus, the oldest fossils. Then we have the modern man, that is the Homo sapiens sapiens.